Welcome to the second lecture on marine propulsion. Today we will cover some basic aspects of screw propeller geometry. So the concepts covered in brief in this particular class will be uh, the geometrical aspects of screw propeller, blade pitch and concepts of skew and rake. The basic thing which is very important to understand is the location of the propeller with respect to the ship. So, this is the ship let us say which is moving forward with a velocity v s. We have the propeller which is located in the stern of the ship. So, here we have the propeller. Now, the propeller is connected by a shaft to the marine engine which provides the power which is delivered to the propeller for its rotation. Now, the propeller is acting in a velocity field which is disturbed because of the presence of the ship. This is very important to understand here that the propeller being in the wake of the ship is facing a velocity which is V A. The details of these concepts we will understand when we study hull propeller interaction. But as of now, let us assume that this V A will definitely not be equal to the speed of the ship V s. So, it is facing, it is acting in the fluid medium here, the propeller is in the water acting in the fluid medium and the inflow velocity into the propeller. So, let us say if we stand at the location of the propeller, the velocity that we will face is a velocity V a and it will definitely vary depending on the uh, different planes in which we see. For example, along the vertical and transverse directions the velocity field width vary. But if we talk about a general average velocity we can say it is a facing a velocity which is V a at which the propeller is advancing in the field. Now, the propeller generates a thrust T and the ship because of the engine present within the ship, the engine provides a delivered power P d due to which a torque as a moment is being absorbed by the propeller. And we have the two velocities V s and V n. Another important thing to note is the rate of revolutions of the propeller, let us say n rpm. Okay. So, these are the basic terminologies which will come in ship propulsion and which will be used time to time to define different propeller characteristics. And the location of the propeller, the specific location which is behind the ship as of now let us take it as a basis for ship propulsion. We will as again we cover the different aspects of the propeller characteristics as well as hull propeller interaction. We will understand why this is the optimal location for a propeller in the ship. So, this is the geometry of a standard screw propeller where a set of blades are mounted on a central structure called the boss or hub which is connected by shaft to the marine engine. So, let us look at it one by one. We have the propeller shaft which is connected to the marine engine and where through which the power is delivered to the propeller. Next, the central line defines the propeller axis here about which the propeller is rotating in a particular direction to give the thrust force. The blades of the propeller which are mounted on the hub, now depending on the propeller design and the type of ship or marine vessel, the number of blades can vary from around 3 to 7. And these blades have different sections based on the design and they provide the thrust force 
for the ship to move ahead again which depends on the flow characteristics and the rotation speed of the propeller. The boss or the hub is the central structure on which the blades are placed. Now when the blade is rotating on the propeller shaft, the direction of rotation is very important in this particular case to define the edges of the blade. In this particular diagram, you can see that the direction of rotation for forward motion is shown in the clockwise direction. So that means if we look at the propeller from behind, we have the ship here where the propeller is connected to the engine in the forward direction. So if we stand in a location here and see from the aft of the ship standing behind the propeller and if the direction of rotation is in the clockwise direction, so it is called a right handed propeller. Okay. That means if it is rotating in the clockwise direction to produce forward thrust for forward motion means the thrust is produced in the forward direction. So, this is called a right handed propeller. Now, if it rotates in this particular direction what will happen? We can define the propeller blade with a set of edges. We can have an edge which is in one direction which we call the leading edge and another one in the opposite direction which we call the trailing edge. Now why is it named so? Because the edge of the propeller which leads the other edge that means when the propeller starts to rotate this edge. Now for this for the next blade this side will be the leading edge. So this is the edge which meets the water first as the propeller rotates the leading edge will hit the water first that is why it is called the leading edge and when we later study the sections of the propeller we will see that uh, talking of airfoil sections which are typically used for propeller the leading edge and trailing edge designs are completely different and that is how the flow around the propeller blade is defined which finally results in the thrust pole. Now the tip is the location on the extreme end of the propeller which defines the diameter of the propeller okay. and on the other side we have the root of the propeller which is attached to the hub. So this location is called the root of the propeller blade. On one side we have the tip which is the extreme end of the propeller and if we calculate the path of the prop traced by the propeller from tip to tip that will give us the diameter of the propeller and the part of the propeller which is attached to the base hub is called the root of the propeller blade. So this defines the basic geometrical aspects of a marine screw propeller and thrust again I have shown here as the propeller this particular propeller if you see more carefully the propeller blades are not like flat surfaces they are curved towards the leading edge. So the blade has a pitch okay. this is very important in defining the hydrodynamic characteristics of the propeller and we will see why it is called a screw propeller based on the pitch of the propeller blade because the blade is a part of a helicoidal surface. Okay. And finally the boss is closed by a cap which is called the boss cap at the aft end. Now the international towing tank conference which is basically an association of organizations which uh, deal with ship hydrodynamic testing. They have defined a global reference frame for ship propeller system and these ITTC norms are heavily used for experimental testing of model ships and propellers and also for numerical analysis of uh, ship hydrodynamic problems. Now this shaft axis of the propeller which goes towards the ship engine along the length of the ship is defined as the x in the global reference frame as per the standard norms and the y axis is defined as positive starboard and the z axis is defined as positive down. This is the standard norm practiced in 
naval architecture terminology. Now, if we look into the local axis system, the, now the propeller is rotating. The propeller blades are rotating about the central shaft axis. So, if I consider one particular blade, its position is continuously changing depending on the angle of rotation of the particular blade at any instant about let us say vertical line. So, depending on that, there is a local frame which is defined which is fixed with respect to a propeller blade. Now, the, the both the local and the global frame has the same x axis that means, which is coincident with the shaft axis. Okay. Now, the local frame is having a in this case let us say y dash and z dash fixed with respect to a propeller blade and it is rotating about the x axis depending again on the propeller action. So, this set of coordinate systems can be used to define uh, a ship propeller system. On top of that, because the propeller blade sections are cylindrical sections, we will also use the concept of cylindrical coordinate system to define the propeller blade sections. So, basically we will intersect the propeller blade with a cylinder and define the sections in that way. So, a cylindrical coordinate system will also be used from time to time to def define certain blade characteristics. Now, uh, there are a set of reference lines which are sometimes used to define propeller blade characteristics. So, for example, we have the propeller reference line this one which is perpendicular if I draw the shaft axis will be perpendicular at this point to the plane of this paper. So, the shaft will be somewhere perpendicular to this plane. So, the propeller reference line in this case is perpendicular to the shaft axis and for the blade of the propeller another blade reference line is defined when we define certain angles like skew. The blade reference line is basically the locus of the midpoints between the leading and trailing edge of the propeller. So, if we consider this particular propeller blade the leading edge will be this one. So, we are seeing the face of the propeller blade sitting from the back. So, this will be the leading edge and the other one which will trail the other leading edge will be defined as the trailing edge and the propeller rotation direction is clockwise. Okay. Now, why is a propeller called a screw propeller? As we have seen in the introduction class that the basis of a screw propeller comes from the concepts of Archimedean screw that is screw having a certain pitch as it rotates along. Now, when we have a screw, it rotates along a central axis and it also moves forward. So, if we have the propeller blade here in the first diagram, if we have the propeller blade and we intersect the blade with a coaxial cylinder which has the cylinder having the axis same as the propeller axis. Okay. Now, each blade section that we have let us say we intersect the propeller at a, at a radius r. If it intersects the propeller blade at a radius r, then the section that we have the propeller blade section at the radius r will be defined as on a part of the helix. Now, as the blade rotates and moves forward, the surface it generates is a helicoidal surface. Now, very simply how do we define it? If I take a point on the right hand side of you can see if I take a point on a cylinder okay, and if it just moves around the cylinder on the base, what will it trace? The locus will be a simple circle, but if we take a point on the cylinder and we rotate around the cylinder and also move it around along the axis of the cylinder. So, we give it a rotation about the axis of the cylinder and also move it vertically along the axis. So, the path traced by this point or the locus will be a helix. So, this is a helix. So, the, a point on the propeller surface as it moves, as it rotates and move forward will trace a helical path. And if we see multiple turns now for the same diagram, if we see multiple turns, 
now you can visualize the helical surface in a better way okay as it moves along the cylinder now a screw propeller can be considered as a screw that advances a certain distance for one revolution okay now the distance traveled by the screw after one revolution is called the pitch which is also used for helix now each propeller blade here in, in instead of the entire propeller we are showing only one blade of the propeller so each propeller blade if it is intersected here on the surface of a cylinder the path traced by a point on the blade will be a helical path okay now if we try to visualize putting a set of axes on this entire diagram we have the cylinder okay and we try to now develop a very simple coordinate system which is basically is the cylindrical coordinate system defined by r theta and z now z is along the axis of the propeller here r is simply along the radius of the cylinder okay and theta is defined with respect to the vertical that means theta is zero in the vertical plane as the propeller blade rotates in the clockwise direction we will have theta gradually increase from its initial value of zero okay so z equal to zero plane is defined at the central axis of the propeller blade z is positive in the forward direction r is in the radial direction and theta is the angular coordinate of the cylindrical coordinate system so theta can is the rotational angle of the propeller blade now if the propeller blade rotates and moves forward on this cylinder what will happen at a particular point initially let's say the blade was here and as it it has gradually rotated the propeller the, this section on the propeller blade is both advancing along the cylinder and also changing its position on the surface of the cylinder that is where the helical path comes in so let's say it started at a point a and after some advancement we have the present location of the propeller blade here now after one whole revolution on the cylinder it will come back to this point a again but it has already advanced along the cylinder because the propeller is rotating and also moving ahead okay so then the new point is a1 on the cylinder now what we have done is from the point a to a1 we unwrap the helix what do we get this a a1 will be next on the diagonal and when we unwrap the surface of the cylinder what do we get we get the circumference of the cylinder which is nothing but 2 pi r and on the other side we will get the distance on along which the propeller blade has traversed along the axis of the cylinder so basically when we are opening the whole diagram what do we get on one side we have the length by which the propeller blade has traveled after one whole revolution which is defined by the pitch of a helix and on the other side because we have opened up the surface of the cylinder we have the perimeter or the circumference uh, for a, let's say uh, of a cylindrical body so it is 2 pi r so along the axis now or uh, let's say along the diagonal we will have the location of the line a a1 so this angle which is defining the pitch of the propeller blade phi then we can write tan phi is equal to this pitch p this is 2 pi radius that means 2 pi r is p by 2 pi r now this r is a variable radius here shown because the actual propeller radius of the propeller blade will be somewhere here okay we have just taken a cylinder of arbitrary radius r which is less than the actual propeller radius and intersected it with the propeller to get a section of the propeller blade and we are trying to get the locus of the section as it rotates one full revolution about the cylindrical axis okay so for this particular section the 
pitch angle can be given as tan inverse p by 2 pi r okay right now what if we take another section on the propeller blade now depending on the propeller blade design uh, it can the propeller blades can have a consistent uh, pitch that means pitch is constant with radius or it can be variable pitch so in that case we will have a different pitch angle if if the pitch varies okay normally for a propeller blade the pitch is defined as a non dimensional quantity as we see that in naval architecture most of the terms finally because we need things to be expressed in both model and full scale we define with respect to certain non dimensional quantities for ease of expression so propeller blade pitch is also non dimensionalized with respect to the diameter because pitch is a dimension in linear unit in meter let's say we divide it by the diameter of the propeller blade and express it as a non dimensional ratio we call it the pitch ratio okay now let us try to understand this concept if we plot the propeller radius in this direction okay we can plot it as uh, radius or also non dimensionalize it with respect to r and on the x axis if we plot the pitch okay now for a propeller where the pitch distribution is uniform we have to take out a certain part here which is basically the boss radius where the blade is not present okay so now if i have a pitch this pitch which is constant with radius so this will be the pitch of the propeller blade okay and let's say this is case 1 for which the propeller is con constant pitch okay now if we take a second case where the pitch is varying with radius case 2 where varying pitch okay so in this case the pitch will have a certain value let us say I am again drawing a new axis here for ease of understanding radius so the pitch here let us say is increasing and also normally towards the end the s short uh, let us make the two diagrams of the same length for ease and this is uh, equi equal to the radius of the propeller the actual radius of the propeller blade now in the second case the pitch is varying with radius okay now if pitch is varying with radius so here we are talking of pitch so we write pitch as a function of radius in the x axis and the radius in the y axis r right so in the first case pr is constant so p basically that means p is not a function of r so the pitch does not vary with radius in the second case p is a function of r so we define the average pitch in this way we take the moment of the pitch about r and we define the average pitch of a propeller blade in using this particular equation integration of pr dr uh, by integration of r dr now see one important thing here the integration is not from 0 to r the integration it is from r 0 to r this is basically r 0 that is why we are starting the curves from r 0 right okay next propeller rake is a very important uh, angle to be considered in the geometry of the propeller if the propeller is placed in such a way that the propeller axis is vertical okay that means the blade axis here the reference line is vertical with respect to the propeller axis so this is the axis of the propeller and if the blade is placed such that 
the blade reference is axis uh, or the reference line of the blade that means now let us say uh, we can define it with a very simple way the blade path a heli uh, traces a helicoidal path as it rotates that we have seen. Now if we rotate a straight line with respect to this particular axis and if we rotate this straight line about this axis and also move forward. So, the path this straight line will trace this particular straight, straight line will trace is a helicoidal path right. But now if we give, give a small angle to this straight line and again rotate about this and also move it forward what we get is the path will be a helicoidal but with an angle. So, this will be the generated path the screw propeller generated from such a line will have a rake ok. Now why is rake given to a propeller? The first one the propeller had in the earlier picture had no rake in this particular case. So, rake is 0, rake angle is 0. In the next case the propeller has a rake angle which is given by theta r ok. Now rake is given to increase the clearance with the hull. So, in some cases what it is observed that the propeller during design you will be able to appreciate it in a better way that the clearance minimum clearance is to be required to maintain between the propeller blade and the uh, hull. Now to maintain that minimum clearance sometimes the propeller diameter becomes restricted. Now if we give a rake to the propeller blade that means if we incline it slightly towards the aft we can maintain a bigger clearance with the hull compared to the case if we did not have a rake. Now why is that clearance required? The clearance is required so that the prop because the propeller is continuously rotating in the fluid medium what happens that it gives a periodic pulsation force. So that leads to hull vibration and discomfort of passengers and crew and also may lead to structural damage. So that is why a minimum clearance between the propeller blade tip and the hull has to be maintained and for cases where sufficient di di diameter is not available the option of raking a propeller blade slightly towards the aft is used. A normally a rake angle of up to 15 degrees can be used for depending on the propeller design. And another angle which is very important to define a propeller is the propeller skew angle. Now if we see the propeller blade from the face. So, if you stand behind the propeller blade, a propeller can have no skew that means the blade axis this is the blade reference line that we have seen which is connecting the central of the leading as well as the trailing edge. That means if you have the leading and trailing edge, if we join the midpoints of the leading and trailing edge right from the root this is the root section of the propeller blade and this is the tip. So, if we join the midpoints of all the propeller blade sections right from the root to the tip ok, if that is purely vertical with respect to the horizontal line that means the propeller has no skew. In most cases in propeller designs the blades are skewed back that means if I join the central line between the leading and trailing edge for each section. Now remember here also the section that we are talking about are the cylindrical sections at taken at certain radii. Now if they make an angle with between the midpoint at the base and the midpoint at the tip that angle is called the skew angle. So depending on the skew it can be balanced skew that means part of the skew is towards the forward part of the central line the vertical line here which is the reference line. So, a part is here and another part of the skew is here. So, the skew is distributed on two sides of the reference line or in the second case of biased skew what is happening the entire skew here the central line is somewhere here. So, the entire skew is defined on only one side of the reference line that is called biased skew. So, why is skew given for propeller blades? Because the propeller is working in a field in a velocity field in a flow field which is disturbed by the presence of the ship 
and that we call as the weak field the concepts of which we will cover later but as of now let us try to understand that the flow characteristics on the propeller blade are not constant all over the blade so because of the velocity distribution which varies it is observed that providing a skew to the propeller blade makes the flow more uniform on the propeller blade and it improves the performance of the propeller blade and leads to better efficiency and it makes the flow more uniform over different chord wise locations on the propeller blade okay that is why in most propellers skew is provided okay so uh, this will be all for the basic concepts covered in this class we will continue with propeller geometry again in the next class thank you